Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sheer, your ABC Tech Girl, and I'm so excited that Revit 2026 is finally here. In today's video, I'm going to review my top 10 features of Revit 2026, so let's dive in. First up, Revit 2026 brings a huge win for documentation workflows. You can now save view placements on sheets and reuse them across multiple sheets. That means your elevations, plans, sections, all types of views can follow a consistent layout automatically. So this is going to be super useful for maintaining standards and reducing manual sheet setup. So here, for example, I have my view on my sheet. And when I select that view, I now have some new options here for positioning and view. You're able to save positions, manage positions, and specify the view anchor. For example, maybe I want the view origin, center, top, left, right, bottom, left. Let's pick top left. And then simply select to save the position. It will then prompt me for the name. And now when I go to other views, I can select them and specify that saved position. And if I ever need to change that saved position, I simply hit edit position and then move it where I want the position to be hit finish and all other plans with that position will align. The second improvement I want to uncover is for walls. This allows you to directly generate walls from rooms or segments of rooms. When you go to create a wall, you'll be able to select from any wall type just as you did before. And now at the top, you'll be able to see two placement options, placement by room and placement by segment. So for example, if I wanted to add, let's say a tile to my bathrooms, I can simply select place by room, select the room and you can see it highlights the entire room and it adds that interior wall to the room. See it again here. Alternatively, I can also place by segment. This allows me to only select a segment of a room. So if I only wanted to place this new tile finish on one wall, I simply select that one wall. One more time, let's do it over here. Select that one wall and there you go. It added that tile wall to that segment. The Third Revit 2026 improvement has to do with sheet lists, which now added three new parameters that can be scheduled, scale, sheet height, and sheet width. So these are added just as normal parameters are added from the fields option here, but they weren't there before, and now you can add these three different parameters to your sheet schedules. Additionally, when you use the drop down to select available fields, you have the option to add title block parameters to your sheet schedules as well. This will list out all title block parameters available in your project, both these built-in ones as well as any custom title block parameters that you've added to your project. And you can go ahead and add them to the schedule as needed. And you can see here that now they're added to my schedule. The next improvement is around sheet collections. You can now see and create new parameters added to sheet collection category on every sheet collection node. And these parameter values are synchronized to every sheet included in that collection, as well as the ability to create a sheet collection schedule. So I've created different sheet collections to organize my sheets, and now I can go and create project parameters. We'll create a new parameter called package and apply it to our sheet collections, which is now an option as a category here. Now I can select my sheet collection and see that that parameter is available. Thank you. 
and this will be applied to all sheets within that sheet collection as well. We also have the ability to create sheet collection schedules. So when I go to create a schedule, sheet collection is again a category available and I can add any custom parameters that I've created in my project for sheet collections. And again, that is translated to all sheets within each collection. The fifth improvement is with topo solids and being able to create a new subdivision. This subdivision inherits the contours of the topo solid you're subdividing and you're even allowed to add both a negative or positive offset. So now I can go ahead and select a topo solid and I have the option to subdivide. Here I can draw my subdivision as I want. and you can see the subdivision was created. I can either offset it in a positive direction or in a negative. And as you can see, it inherited the same contours. You can even control its material independently. Improvement number six also has to do with topo solids. So in previous releases, you could not copy and paste points and lines when shape editing. This functionality is now enabled. So you can now go ahead and select other topo solids, select to modify the subdivisions, and select any points that you would like to copy. Simply hit Control C, or the copy button at the top. And now, when you go to edit a different topo solid subdivision, you can paste that. There you go. The next two improvements both have to do with compound structures like floors, ceilings, walls, etc. The first is the ability to customize the layer priority. And the second has to do with allowing the compound structure to not have a core layer. So let's take a look at this wall right here. I can now edit this wall and its structure and move the core layer outside of the core boundary. So I no longer need to have a layer within this core boundary. This is going to be really useful when creating finishes or other types of walls. And you'll notice that now I have a new column called priority. This allows me to modify the priority, which will modify how these walls get joined. For example, I could have a priority here of two and a priority here of four. And we can see how that gets modified. And those are the improvements to compound structures. The ninth improvement is to view reference labels, which was a big headache before, and I'm so happy they modified this. Previously, when placing a view reference that referenced another view, the view label was type-based. Now it is instant-based. So for example, if I wanna create a detail referencing another view, I can place that detail and I can place the exact same detail on another plan or another location. And you'll notice that the reference label is now instance. So I can make any changes I want 
and they will be able to have the same reference with a different label. And last but not least is the Accelerated Graphics Tech Preview. You can now experience a significant navigation, performance improvement in both 3D and 2D views, helping you to review your designs faster. So you'll notice that in all your views, you now have this option up here for Accelerated Graphics Tech Preview that you can now toggle on. You'll get a warning, click OK, and this will enhance your graphics. So you'll, you'll be able to navigate your views faster and see things more clearly. You can use the arrow drop down for some options like hiding the button text, positioning this button, or closing this toolbar. And there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite features in Revit 2026. Let me know in the comments which one you're most excited to try out, or if you've already upgraded, what made the biggest difference in your workflow. If you found this helpful, hit that like button, share it with your BIM crew, and don't forget to subscribe for more AEC Tech Tips. And remember, stay empowered, stay inspired, and always challenge what is possible.